Shalom Aki. I want to give all praise and glory to Yahweh, Bahashem Yahweh Shai, Bahashem Rekakwadash, double honest to the apostles and the elders of Great Millstone, and Shalom to the elect. And um, today's lesson is going to be on this interview um, with Angela Staten, who she's, uh, I believe, a um, conservative out of uh, Georgia. And um, the interview she had with Dr. Phil. All right, in which we know Dr. Phil is a, uh, you know, he's a, um, what's the word I'm looking for? He's a hypnotist, so to speak, meaning he's here to further the agenda, you know, of these elites. Meanwhile, Angela Staten, you know, um, was having a quarrel with her son turned transformer, you know, and um, him, along with everybody else in the world, basically, is trying to make her respect the fact that he's lying to himself, you know? And she's getting a lot of backlash because she just won't do it. Amongst other things, she speaks about, you know, in which, you know, on her Instagram, um, when you see the comments of the different things she speaks about, which is a lot of stuff we speak about, you know, abortion and this, uh, BLM movement, all that, all that, all the hypocritical stuff that this world upholds. All right, she's against vaccinations. All the hypocritical stuff that this place upholds. Um, and just read the comments and how everybody is coming at her off of emotions instead of facts. When um, prime example, if you watch her interview on the Breakfast Club, which um, it was the same exact thing. Every word that came out of the mouth was, I think, I believe, you can't say that, da 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 Every word that came out of her mouth, all right, versus what Charlemagne and, and them said, was uh, all factual. You know, she was stating facts, you know. And um, that led me to do this lesson, you know, amongst watching the brother out there in GMS, well, the brother in the Kent, uh, GMS Chief Cornerstone, the brother Kalab, he had did a lesson on... Uh, a conversation he had with an overly emotional uh, um, guy on a job, you know? And um, it's really the common consensus of the people in the world that they just have too much emotion, you know? And that's actually a problem because being overly emotional makes you self-willed, all right? You can't receive wisdom, all right? And if you can't receive wisdom, what life do you have within you? The scriptures say in uh, Wisdom of Solomon 7 and 24, um, let me just grab it. This is Wisdom of Solomon 7 and 24. It says, for wisdom is more moving than any motion. All right. So how much more, you know, how, how much stronger is it than your own, uh, motion? All right. Or your own emotion. So like it. She passeth and goeth through all things by reason of her pureness. For she is the breath of the power of God and a pure influence flowing through the glory of the Almighty. Therefore, can no defiled thing fall in unto her. You know, and the scriptures say, you know, which I brought that out to prove, as I was mentioning before, that the breath of the Heavenly Father, the breath that the Lord have given um, Adam, you know, was wisdom. And if you don't have wisdom, you are inherently dead. All right. And the scriptures say in Wisdom of Solomon 1 and 4. All right. 1 and uh, 3, actually. Actually, I'll start at the top. Um, Yeah, I'll start at the top. Love righteousness, ye that be judges of the earth. All right. Which are you so-called blacks, Hispanics, and Native Americans. The most I have made you judges of the earth. This is why he have given you the law, statutes, and commandments to, to govern the earth and to run it aright. And in simplicity of heart seek him. For he will be found of them that tempt him not, and show of himself unto such as do not distrust him. For forward thoughts separate from God, and his power when it is tried reproveth the unwise. For, for into a malicious soul wisdom shall not enter, nor the well in, in the body that is subject unto sin. Okay? So if you subject unto your flesh, all right, which the flesh is inherently wicked, as the Apostle Paul spoke of in Romans 7. 
He said, I know within my flesh the well is no good thing. All right? So if you subject unto the flesh, wisdom cannot dwell with you. All right? Wisdom will, um, because wisdom is a, uh, is a very straightforward, it's a very harsh thing. You know, a lot of times when wisdom is, is present, you know, it's, um, it comes off as very bossy, the spirit of wisdom. All right. Nevertheless, it's helpful. It's needful for you. All right. You know. So, and this is what makes this these times so, these are one of the reasons what, that makes these times, you know, so bad for a lot of people. Because they're so trusting in their flesh. Okay? Which the flesh is where, again, wickedness dwells. All right? As the scripture, as it is also written in Ephesians 6 and 10, we wrestle not against flesh and blood, but against spiritual wickedness in high places. Okay, so that wickedness, all right, that you, well, Salakia, yeah, the wickedness that you uphold, take hold on to, and what she sees it on a, on, a, on, a, on a lower scale as far as the agenda being pushed, all right, to basically kill off uh, the so-called African-Americans, all right, because if you, you know, push men to be transformers, why would, you know, what need would they want to uh, uh, recreate, procreate? Therefore, soon enough, your race would be killed off. You know, that was that show, um, Utopia. That was that main thing. The guy was saying he he's going to, um, you know, he plans on vaccinating people, not to kill them off right away, all right? But eventually, they will be killed off because those vaccinations, after three or four generations, or this vaccinations, all right, will sterilize the people. Okay, so that's the same thing that's happening today. All right, so now if you're, you know, feel like this is, you know, you're, you're going along with the get along, so to speak. All right, you know, you're, you're, uh, you're basically pro-death. All right, you're homicidal. All right, you're a terrorist. You're a terrorist. You're terrorizing your people. Okay. But this is um, 2 Timothy chapter 3, verse 1. This know also, and this, you know, this scripture damn near plays in my mind every day, you know, watching some type of news or talking to people because um, they fit this. It says, this know also that in the last days, perilous times shall come. All right. Now, Matthew 24 is the main scripture we go to going into perilous times, which we see we're in the last days because... You got violent protests in Germany, violent protests in Paris, violent protests in Colombia, violent protests in, um, what is it, Iran. Uh, I believe it's Iran, if I'm not mistaken. Violent protests in um, the Palestinian border between Palestine and Israel. All right. You got, you know, shit popping off over there in, um, what is that, in Ukraine. You know. So it's a lot of violence happening. A lot of dangerous things are happening in the world. Many people are dying. For men shall be lovers of their own selves. All right. But this points out another reason why perilous times is happening. All right. Because men shall be lovers of their own selves. And the scriptures say what? Pride goeth before destruction and a haughty spirit before fall. Okay. Covetous, boasters, proud, blasphemers, disobedient to parents, unthankful, unholy, you know, and that falls all that all falls under the character, the, the category of loving your own self. All right. You can't get chastised by your parents anymore because, you know, you feel like you got all the answers. All right. Being disobedient to parents, unthankful. OK. You know, hating your parents for telling you what's needed as opposed to what you want. And that's a heavy spirit, as I mentioned. Um, I myself personally, I've noticed like um, whenever my sister, she's talking to my niece, you know, her daughter. And um, she says no to something that my niece asked for. 
she'll start crying and saying that you hate me, you don't love me, you know. So that's really a a a, a very strong um spirit going on nowadays because she's only four years old. How the you know what the hell she know about that? You know, but that's a spirit that this devil has put out there. You know, and these kids are growing up on TikTok and YouTube and all that BS. You know, so this is something that they've picked up. And again, it's just understanding that it's a strong spirit. Okay. You know, even for us in, in this truth, the flesh, I'm noticing, you know, the flesh is trying to kick up even more, which is why through our apostles and elders, they've been, they've been pushing it, you know, get more into the spirit. Okay. It says without, and it's only going to get worse. The scriptures say in um second Ezra 5, you know, that iniquity shall increase above that which thou now seest. And soon enough, best believe this devil's going to push pedophilia. You know, just as he's pushing now, all right, which people would have thought, thought it crazy, you know, maybe five years ago, he's pushing now that kids can, you know, kids can decide their own gender. Okay? So it says, without natural affection, truce breakers, false accusers, incontinent, fierce, despisers of those that are good. All right. Again, anything that's righteous, anything that has some semblance to order, they hate. OK. And when you watch that interview, that's basically what um, Angela Staten's, you know, son was saying, you know, which they had a problem with her calling him her son. Meanwhile, this is the person who she gave birth to. This is the person who, you know, was one of the first amongst the first to see him. So she knows what he is. Having a form of godliness, but denying the power thereof from touch from such turn away. Okay, but that was the point on that. Okay, so this is the book of Proverbs, chapter 29, verse 20. It says, Seest thou a man that is hasty in his words, there is more hope of a fool than of him. Okay. There's more hope of a fool than of him. All right, because he is a fool. Okay. And again, pride goes before destruction and the Holy Spirit before fall. That's a potent and a well known scripture, but people don't really, people don't um, attribute the Bible to, this, to the everyday life. They really don't. You know? Um, there's another point I want to make. I just forgot. Um, Lord willing to come back to me. But uh, well, yeah, you know, going into the Bible, this is how Esau fell away, man, because of his haughty spirit, his haughty spirit being in in the spirit of Cain. All right, knowing what kind of sacrifice he had to give, because when you go into um Genesis four, it speaks about in the process of time. So how did they know the process of time if, you know. They didn't know the laws back then. Which they did know the laws. The laws were ruined, written orally. All right. And that process of time was, you know, when it was time of harvest and they got their first, you know, their first, uh, their first things of their flock, as it says in, um, what is that, Exodus 22, that they, they are to give it unto the Lord. All right. And Esau being proud, knowing what he's supposed to do and didn't do it anyway, gave the Lord some fruit, you know, and that's the greed of Eve to this very day. And look, you know, look how the earth is now because of his wickedness. All right. So that's a fact that pride, you know, is only going to hurt you in the end. All right. Pride is only going to hurt you in the end. Now he's gearing up to fight against the Heavenly Father, in which he's going to lose. Well, really, the son of the Heavenly Father, Yahweh Shai, and the angels, in which he's going to lose horribly. Okay. As a matter of fact, when you go into the book of Romans, the ninth chapter, it speaks about how the Lord gave this devil pride just so he can show his strength within him. Okay. Um, according to the law, as I mentioned before, there's a scripture that speaks about if you have a stubborn and rebellious son. What are you supposed to do with that son? Right. This is Deuteronomy 21 and 18. If a man have a stubborn and rebellious son, which will not obey the voice of his father or the voice of his mother, 
and that when they have chastened him, will not hearken unto them. Then shall his father and his mother lay hold on him and bring him out unto the elders of his city and into the gate of his place. And they shall say unto the elders of his city, This our son is, is stubborn and rebellious. He will not obey our voice. He is a glutton and a drunkard. And all the men of his city shall stone him with stones. Okay. And the Most High is going to go even further this time. He's going to stone you with missiles. You know. He's <laughs> You know. As they threw stones upon him till he died. All right. That he died. The Most High is going to, you know, take this place out by missiles, man. The scriptures say that um, uh, the inheritance of the wicked is uh, fire, is brimstone. What was that, Job 20? Yes, yeah, lucky. I don't know if I was, uh, you know, mixing two precepts up, but this is a good one. Where the scriptures speak about different, um, you know, rewards for the hypocrite or the wicked. This is one, Job eight and thirteen. Um, Salaki. I'll start at um, Job 8 and 9. For we are but of yesterday and know nothing, because our days upon earth are a shadow. Shall not they teach thee? All right. In which we are your spiritual parents that teach you of the ways of the Lord. All right. Even Esau eat them. As the scriptures say, women and children rule over us. Esau is that child. You know? He's, he's, you know, spiritually a child. All right. Throwing tantrums when he can't get his way. All right. Can't take heed to instruction. That's a child. Shall not they teach thee and tell thee in other words of their out of their heart? Can the rust grow up without mire? Can the flag grow without water? Whilst it is yet in his greenness and not cut down, it withereth before any herb. Okay. Because what? You know. How how long could um you know plants and everything go without water? You can't. You know, need a proper uh portion of sunlight and water, which represents what this word. All right, the scriptures say, um, curse be man that trusteth in man. You know, for he is like the I'll grab it, you know, I, I I'll grab it after this. So are the paths of all that forget God and the hypocrites hope shall perish. All right, that's Jeremiah 17, which I was mentioning before. All right, and it's five. Thus saith Yahweh, cursed be the man that trusteth in man, and maketh flesh his arm, and whose heart departeth from the Lord. For he shall be like the heath in the desert, and shall not see when good cometh. Okay, but shall inhabit the parched places in the wilderness, and a salt land, and not inhabit it, going into, as we just read. You know, it's not going to receive any water. All right. It's not going to receive this good word, this wisdom, in which case it's going to be dead. All right. And these people are spiritually dead. Soon enough, the most high is going to have to, um, you know, <laughs> bury him. OK, he's going to have to bury him. And it's not going to be a proper funeral either. OK, so, uh, you know, just with that, shalom to the elect.